My name is Cheryl, and I'm joined today, as always, by Gino Sigismondi. And today we're going to be talking about how to choose a Sure wireless microphone. But we, before we get into the presentation, just a few items of housekeeping. This webinar will be recorded, as they always are. So if you ever want to come back and refresh this information or direct a fellow colleague to it, you can always go to sure.com slash training. That is where we keep all of our webinar archives. There's a lot of great information there, so please feel free to peruse to your heart's content and learn everything you could possibly need to learn, hopefully. <laughs> Sure.com slash training. Second of all, as we go through today, if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in the question pane in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. If you don't see it for some reason, just look for a sort of a little toolbar and click on the orange box with an arrow in it, and that'll sort of maximize that toolbar and give you access to that question pane. Um, we will answer questions at the end of the webinar, um, so please be patient, and we will get to as many of those as time permits at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to pass things over to Gino. Gino, tell us all about Shure Wireless Systems. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this morning. Um, this uh, is a great topic that hopefully will be useful to a lot of people because we've got lots of wireless microphone systems. And I know that uh, working in the support area over here at Sure for as many years as I have, that's something that we definitely get lots of questions about. People definitely want to know uh, a lot about, uh, you know, how, how do I choose a wireless microphone system, right? Because there are so many options. So what we're going to do here is kind of go through all the different options that we have and, uh, and tell you, give you some pointers and things that you might need to ask that uh, will help you help you sort through the alphabet soup and uh, and come up with uh, something that'll work for your particular application. Uh, this is uh, one of the first times we've repeated a webinar topic. We've been doing these uh, for a little over two years now, I think, maybe one day, a little over two years. And uh, we don't typically repeat topics, but we've had quite a bit of uh, turnover in our uh, wireless product lineup. So figured it was time to do it again and, uh, and get it going. So, uh, you know, the uh, some of the systems that we covered last time are no longer with us, and we've had several uh, great new systems come out. So this will kind of give you a, a high-level look at all of those as we go through this. Uh, again, we, uh, we won't go into super amount of detail on every system because we'd be here for hours. Um, so there may be questions you'll have later on, and we'll actually have some time for questions later, or you can reach us by the usual methods. So we're going to go through, uh, through three things here, starting with um, the three things that you have to know before you can choose a wireless microphone system. Then we'll talk specifically about sort of the general advantages of Sure Wireless, just kind of uh, some things that apply across the board, no matter which one of your systems, uh, which one of our systems you might be looking at, and then go through the sort of system by system comparison. So what are the three things you must know if you want to go wireless? Here they are. What are you doing? Where are you? And how many wireless microphone systems do you need to use? Basically, what we mean by that is in the same room at the same time. So why are these things important? Well, what are you doing? I mean, that's a very simple way of saying, what's your application? Uh, are you a guitar player that wants to go wireless? Uh, are you an aerobics instructor? Are you a wedding videographer? What What are you doing? Um, because once you know that, then you can help get into a little bit more uh, specifics about which system really is right for you. And not only, you know, what are you doing, meaning the specific um application of how you're using the wireless, but what's your environment as well? Uh, are you playing, uh, you know, on, in a stadium, in a club, in a church, uh, all of, in a theater? All of these things can impact which system you go with. Where are you is important because when, when we talk about making a wireless microphone system work successfully, you have to make sure that it is on a clear frequency. And knowing where you are, which directly correlates to what potential sources of interference they might be become important in terms of, again, uh, getting that system to work properly and choosing the correct frequency band. We're going to talk about frequency bands more in a little bit. But it's important to know, you know physically where you are. By that, we mean the city that you're in or the zip code or something like that. And how many? The reason that's in red is because that's the big one. That is the single biggest differentiator between different wireless microphone systems. Uh, there's lots of minor things that differentiate, lots of features, you know, things like, I don't know, maybe you want it to be encrypted. Maybe you want a battery-powered receiver. Maybe you want detachable antennas. All of those things could be important to your specific application, but ultimately, the, the, the biggest 
thing that you're paying for as you go up through a lot through the line is how many systems you can run in the same room at the same time. You have to answer that question first before you can even begin having a conversation. Uh, if it turns out that you're, uh, you know, a small theater and you have, uh, 20 actors uh, on stage and you want to have a wireless mic on each one of those, that directly impacts what your choices are in terms of which system you can use. Because as we'll see, a lot of the entry level or more affordable systems can't handle that. And that's where a lot of people get hung up as they say, well, you know, we, we, we need 20 wireless mics, but we're kind of on a budget. So we want to look at an affordable system. Well, those two things are in direct conflict with each other. Uh, the more wireless you want to use, the, the more money you have to be prepared to spend. And don't forget that includes existing systems as well, uh, you, because anything that you're going to buy new has to be added into what you're already using. And that's also important information to have when you're going to buy new wireless is what specific systems are though, and what are those and what specific frequencies are they operating on. So those are the really the things you have to keep in mind. There are some other considerations, obviously, that differentiate the systems, and we're going to see all of these various things kind of come and go as we talk about the different systems. You know, does it does it need do you need it to be rack mountable? Do you need to remote mount your antennas? Do you care about metal, digital versus analog? I'll talk about more more about that in a minute. Operating range, networking, encryption, rechargeability. All of these things are features of different wireless systems that may be important to you. But again, you have to kind of answer those first basic questions before you can even get into any of this stuff. Uh, the digital versus analog thing has kind of become a, um, uh, an interesting one that we've been getting fielding that question a lot lately as we have uh, come out with more and more digital systems, yet we still have some analog ones in the line. And there's, there's actually pros and cons to each. It would be nice to be able to just have a blanket statement of digital is always better, uh, but that's not necessarily the case. Why would you choose a digital wireless microphone system? primarily because of sound quality. Those of you who have been using wireless for a while know that in an analog wireless microphone system, there are certain uh, processes that are done, and I don't want to go too far into details on that, but there are there are audio processes that, that are required in analog FM transmission that can impact the sound quality to a certain extent. And we've gotten to the point with analog systems where they sound pretty good, and the companding and, and things that are, that are in there uh, have a minimal impact on the audio, but they're still there. In a digital wireless microphone system, those artifacts are pretty much gone. It's as close as you can get to actually sounding like you're using a wire without using a wire. And that's because you're not, you're no longer using an, an analog audio signal to directly modulate a carrier wave, but you're basically sending digital data over it, which can be then reconstructed exactly as it went in when it gets to the receiver end of things. So um, better dynamic range, wider, flatter frequency response, lower distortion, all of that stuff. It just, it sounds really, really good. Um, they also offer increased battery life. I think when you look at the battery life of cross sure wireless systems, you'll find that it's generally always better on the digital systems. And in some cases you can actually get more channels on the air, but that, that, as we'll see, that doesn't apply across the board. So that's why we don't specifically call it out as a, as an advantage here of digital, um, but that that's some reasons why you might consider digital. But again, the analog systems still sound you know sound pretty darn good and, and work really well. And that's kind of why, in the wireless microphone world, the transition to digital has happened slower than it has I think in other wireless technologies. And that's because FM analog radio works and sounds pretty good. Components that you're going to need for a system, obviously you're going to need a microphone, unless it's a wireless guitar system, in which case it's a guitar instead, and then a transmitter that takes that audio signal and converts it to a radio signal. And you have handheld transmitters, which are pretty obvious what those are, body pack transmitters, which can be used for a variety of sources, so anything that's not going to be held in your hand, um, a direct instrument like a guitar, lavalier microphones, headset microphones, instrument microphones like you might clip onto a saxophone or something like that. Those all get used with the body pack style of transmitter. And then there's also something called a plug-on transmitter, which is basically um, a little box or a cube or something that, that can take any regular wired handheld microphone and turn it into wireless microphone. Uh, you see those a lot in broadcast applications when you watch reporters out in the field giving a, giving a, a broadcast news report. Often you'll see them using a handheld mic with a plug-on transmitter. So those, those do exist as well. 
Then, of course, you need a receiver, which is the thing that takes the radio signal and converts it back into an audio signal. Those come in many different styles, sort of a, a portable tabletop type format, uh, sometimes referred to as baggable receivers. But usually it's just a, a little box that uh, has permanently attached antennas, not really meant for rack mounting. It's just the kind of thing you throw on top of your guitar amp or put it up on a shelf, something like that. Of course, fully rack mountable style receivers that include uh, rack airs and can be either half rack or full rack size for um, uh, applications where you want to have it in a nice rack to be able to move around. Portable receivers, which are battery powered, often used for camera mount applications. A videographer's uh, tends to be portable for that because all of these other receiver types we've seen thus far are AC powered, but the portable receivers tend to be battery powered. And also multi channel rack mount receivers, which gives you uh, multiple receivers uh, in a single rack mount chassis. Uh, dual and sometimes quad, like you see here, uh, receivers can be, can be available here. Uh, and, and something to note about wireless mic systems, again, if you're not familiar with the concept, is that a receiver is re required for every transmitter. That's every wireless mic you have or every wireless guitar you have requires a receiver, an individual receiver tuned to a different frequency to pick up that system. When we look at a multi-channel receiver like the ULXD quad down here, it may look like one thing. It's one box, but there's actually four receiver four receiver channels housed in that one box. So don't be misled by that thinking that it's one receiver picking up four mics. It's actually still four receivers in a, in a single box. Talking specifically about some of the advantages of Sure Wireless systems, we'll look at these each in a little bit more detail, but more available frequency choices. Easy to set up. I think that's something we really strive for in all of our systems is not only give you lots of features, but make them easy to use. Sound quality is always top notch. We have uh, recently developed some very robust rechargeable battery options. And of course, the legendary sure reliability. All this stuff gets dropped and baked and frozen and sweated on and everything else like all of our other products do. So it almost, almost kind of goes without saying at this point, but I think it's worth uh, pointing out. As you may have heard, if you follow these sorts of things, we're in a bit of a spectrum crunch right now as the FCC continues to find ways to reallocate frequencies within the UHF television band where wireless microphones operate. The amount of available spectrum indicated here by the, the white sections of the chart uh, is getting to be less and less. In a, in, a, in a major metropolitan area, this might be what it looks like in terms of the number of TV channels that are actually available for you to operate your wireless microphone systems in. Um, so you really need to make sure, again, this is where the, the, the where you are question becomes important, right? Because this, this map of TV channels might look different depending on what city you're in. So you have to make sure when you're buying a wireless system that you choose a frequency band that can get you to one of the, where one of these clear channels are. Sure wireless systems, some of our uh, higher tier systems also allow you to use lots of wireless mics within a single TV channel. So if you only had, say, TV channel 26 available to you in your city, that six megahertz chunk of spectrum there, how many wireless mics could I cram into that one TV channel? Well, that's one of the major differentiators between these different systems. So it's definitely something to look at. Um, we also have wireless systems that operate outside of the UHF television band and uh, what, what, what I refer to as unlicensed band. And, and there's pros and cons to that as well. And we'll kind of look at what those are. But um, the spectrum crunch is a real thing that we have to deal with. So choosing the right frequency band is important. Uh, as you can see on this chart here, it's kind of hard to read, but it sure has lots of options. Uh, if you look across the top row here, this shows all the different wireless series we have, including a few discontinued ones like PG and PGX, and which frequency bands are available for it. So each one of these colored chunks here reflect, reflects a tuning range that is available for that particular wireless system. And you'll notice that like on the ULXD, for example, and this actually also applies to QLXD, there are four different frequency bands. And between all four of those bands, they cover the entire UHF television range. Even on BLX, which is our entry-level system, you notice it's a much smaller range, which again is a differentiator between an entry-level system like BLX and a higher-end system like ULXD. You'll notice that it's only a a 24 megahertz tuning range, but there's still four options. So no matter where you are in the country, one of these bands will probably give you some frequencies that you can get to 
uh, in order to, 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 to find a clear operating channel for your system. Um, it's pretty much unmatched, I think, in, in the industry um, to find this many frequency options available for your different wireless systems. So uh, one good thing to consider there. We also have some easy setup features. Um, if you're going to give people lots of frequencies to choose from, you have to make it relatively simple for them to figure out which one to use, right? Because again, that's the the the, the number one number one thing that makes wireless mic systems not work properly is outside interference. Um, and all of these systems now have selectable frequencies, which means the user can choose which frequency they want to use. But how do you know? Well, you could consult the database on a website, but ultimately the receiver that's in the room where you're going to use the wireless mic knows best. This here, this little video just kind of shows quickly how you do it with like ULXD, where you just activate a scan and you go and it finds a clear frequency and says, this is a good one. And then you hit enter and you sync your transmitter to that same frequency and you're done. Um, and all of our systems now have some ability for the receiver to go out and find a clear frequency for you. And higher end systems have a little bit more sophisticated mechanisms for doing this, but any of our systems offers some um, automatic frequency selection. And then the second part of it is making sure you get your transmitter set up to a frequency that matches the receiver. Um, and we have a feature, not, not on all of our systems, but some of them have what we call infrared sync, which is you push the sync button on the receiver, it sends an infrared signal to the transmitter and says, here we are, we're on the same frequency now. And again, you're all, you're all set to go. So that is, um, that is a, a, a useful feature there again. So two button pushes really gets you set up to a clear channel. One one button push to scan, another button push to sync, you're pretty much in business. Sound quality, again, is kind of a tough thing to do on a webinar because I can't really give you examples to listen to very, very readily. But, um, you know, we, it, obviously we, we started as a microphone company and got into the radio business later. So um, making good sounding microphones is something we've always kind of uh, prided ourselves on. And that continues into the into the wireless world as well. If you're going with an analog system, again, as I mentioned um, there are some processes involved in making sure that sounds good. We feel like ours have evolved to a pretty good point with what we call something called audio reference companding, which is just a, a more elegant way of handling the companding circuit that is present in every analog FM wireless microphone system that really minimizes some of the effects that you might get on a system that where it's not as well implemented. So again, even something like our top tier Axiant wireless microphone system, which is actually using FM analog transmission, is still a really good, um, good sounding system. Uh, in fact, as, as good or better than our digital system, some people might say. So, uh, but really across the board, even at the entry level, digital is always gonna give you an advantage. The, the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz flat frequency response you can achieve with a digital wireless microphone system is simply something that's not possible in an analog system. So if you're looking for the best in sound quality, um, digital is, is kind of where it's at. Rechargeability is something that people have been asking us about for many years. Uh, and for a long time, it was something we didn't really encourage because any of the third party sort of off the shelf rechargeables that are out there in nickel metal hydrides or even worse nickel cadmium batteries just never delivered the continuous runtime that you really need to make um, to make a wireless microphone system um, uh, work for a, a, any significant length of time. Uh, but a couple of years ago, we started working on our own proprietary rechargeable solution based on based on medical grade lithium ion technology. And that really is a very, very robust and reliable format that we feel confident in. And this um, there are a couple of different battery options available. You can see them pictured there that work in different systems. So I should mention that the wireless system itself has to have the built-in ability to support these batteries. In other words, these don't just work in any wireless microphone system, but in specific ones from us. Some of these systems have the option to go either or, some of them are rechargeable only, but the options are out there. And one of the advantages of lithium ion is not only is it robust, but it offers really long run times. In fact, you can see a, uh, the screen capture there is from a, a GLXD receiver that shows 14 hours and 26 minutes remaining. And that's not an artist rendering that actually is possible to get up to 17 hours on that system. So really long run time. And if it hasn't, if the little light bulb hasn't gone on above your head yet, notice that that's showing you your battery life in hours and minutes, not 
bars, which is huge. Most wireless transmitters, or if the receiver can show you the battery life of the transmitter, shows you, you know, five bars, then four bars, then three bars. What does that mean? I don't know. It just means that my battery is not full anymore. When it gets down to two bars, geez, I guess maybe I should change the battery. But you might still have two hours left, but how do you know? Because the bars don't really tell you. So with this, uh, the, there's actually a chip on these batteries that keeps track of this information and delivers you, delivers you remaining runtime in hours and minutes accurate to within 15 minutes. So it's a, it's a pretty reliable metric there. Uh, and it also keeps track of things like uh, battery health and cycle count and temperature and all of these other things. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a really great solution if you're interested in rechargeable batteries. There are many charging options available, either standalone or docking chargers or um, uh, charging the battery in the receiver itself, which is kind of what this little doghouse is in the middle here. It's actually a GLXD receiver charging a battery. The USB chargers, there's, there's all kinds of options for rechargeable batteries here. Okay, so let's get into the specifics of Sure Wireless Systems. I kind of divided them up into uh, some, some categories here, going from our basic sort of entry-level wireless systems to uh, what I call mid-tier sort of professional systems, and then uh, wrapping up with our, with our premium systems. You might notice that not every Sure Wireless possible is covered in here, and that's because we didn't want the webinar to take hours. So I did do a, a little bit of filtering to try and focus on the most uh, unique, new, or exciting ones to, to help you choose. So let's, uh, let's look again. The key differentiators we're going to look at as we go through these are the frequency range, that is, what tuning range do these systems offer and how many, and how many frequencies do they have. Although that's a number I like, I actually don't spend a lot of time on because it's really sort of irrelevant. A lot of manufacturers like to throw out there a big number, like our system has you know, 5,000 selectable frequencies. But if it's only over a 24 megahertz tuning range, that's not really so impressive because you can't use all 5,000 of those at the same time anyway. Only a fraction of them are actually going to be usable based on local TV conditions. So what we really want to look at, the number we're really interested in, is the number of compatible systems. How many frequencies in a single frequency band can I get on the air in the same room at the same time? That's the real differentiator that we're really concerned about. And that's a much more realistic number. And we'll talk about some antenna options as far as whether or not the systems have removable antennas or if they're permanently attached, which again may make a difference. So starting with BLX Wireless, this is one of our newest wireless systems. It's been out for, I think, a little over a year now, and it kind of replaced our former entry-level systems, both the Performance Gear and the PGX Wireless systems. Both of those were um, were kind of replaced by one system here called the BLX. So it's still an analog system that operates in the UHF TV band. However, the audio quality has actually been improved on it. If you compare it to some of our older analog systems, you'll notice that they've made some pretty significant improvements in the sound quality on, on BLX. So it is a, a really high quality um, system from an an, from a sound quality standpoint, even though it's analog. A 24 megahertz tuning bandwidth, and across those 24 megahertz, so all of those frequencies are open to you, you could probably get about 12 compatible systems on the air. However, the number shown is red, and, and red is a really significant one because that tells us if I only had one TV channel available to me, how many systems could I use in that one six megahertz chunk of spectrum? And that's about five systems. So again, depending on your local conditions, you can use anywhere from about five to twelve BLX systems, which is fine for an entry level uh, for an entry level application. But again, you can see to come back to our earlier example in a theater application where you need twenty wireless microphones, BLX may not be the best choice but again if you if you if you have a modest modest needs in terms of how many channels it's a really great sounding system with really long battery life you can see that 14 hours on a set of AA batteries is actually better even than some of our digital systems um there was really some good improvements made there uh, in terms of how long it can run on a set of alkaline batteries it has both group and channel scan i should explain what group scan is channel scans kind of obvious finds a clear channel for you right but if you're using multiple systems you not only need to make sure that those systems are operating on clear frequencies but you also need to make sure that they are operating on frequencies that don't conflict with one another and how you do that is you actually make sure that all your receivers are set to the same group and then different channels within that group how do you know which group to use 
that's where group scan comes into play. It's the receiver's ability to go and scan all of its groups and channels and come back and tell you which group is the one that you should be using. And this is a feature that both PG and PGX wireless didn't have. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice way to help, again, ensure that your systems are working well together. There are several different receiver options available in BLX, single, dual, and rack mount. Here, what pictured here is the dual uh, receiver. It's not really a rack mount receiver. It's just a dual channel. Again, sort of that tabletop design. The, the single channel tabletop is, just looks like half of one of these. This is the BLX4R, which is the rack mountable receiver, uh, which is a nice half rack design. Again, two of these can be mounted side by side in a 19-inch rack space. It's got a, an LCD display, which shows you a little bit more information than you get on the tabletop design designs and it has detachable antennas so again if you are rack mounting these and need to front mount the antennas or use antenna distribution you can accommodate that this is probably the the most affordable rack mount receiver we've ever had in our lineup so it's um if you're looking for that little bit more professional type of installation but otherwise blx meets your needs it's a good it's a good receiver to use for those applications PGXD was Shure's first digital wireless microphone system. So it was kind of built in the same sort of uh, components from the outside as our PGX wireless. So it looks very much like a, like a regular PGX analog system, but the guts are all different because of the digital technology. Uh, this is probably the lowest cost. Well, it is definitely our lowest cost digital system, but it shares all of the same audio characteristics as any of our other digital systems. So again, that that flat wide frequency response is this is the most affordable place to get that. It operates uh, differently than the BLX in that it's in the 900 megahertz unlicensed band, specifically 902 to 928 megahertz. So this is an unlicensed band, which is a little bit more of a free for all than the UHF TV band, but you don't have to worry about any of this other spectrum crunch stuff we've been talking about. The limitation here is that even though we give you 61 channels to choose from, only any, any five of those are compatible. Right. So again, for smaller applications where, you know, it's a limited number of channels, you know, up to five PGXD is great. Uh, if you have more than that, but you still want to stay in this price point, that's where you might think back to BLX, which even though it's analog is still a really good sounding system. And the advantage is that it allows you more uh, more channels on the air than you can get with PGXD. But if sound quality is your only concern and you don't have to use a lot of wireless mics, then you might consider PGXD. Still uses AA alkaline batteries, again, about 9 to 10 hours there, which is pretty good. It has um, auto channel select, which is important, particularly in an unlicensed band, because you really want to make sure you do that scan to find a clear frequency. You can IR sync the transmitter, and it has interchangeable microphone heads. This is something on the on BLX and the GLXD, which we're going to talk about next, the next digital system, don't have. When you buy a BLX with an SM58 on it, you can't change it. It's kind of hard molded into the handheld body itself so that's it's that's your only choice which not that the sm58 is a bad choice but <laughs> let's say you wanted to upgrade to a beta 58 or a ksm9 or whatever you you're <laughs> kind of stuck with it on blx whereas on pgxd you can actually take the mic head off and and change it to other other uh sure mics which is uh, an option on all of our higher end systems but not as much on the entry level systems Speaking of GLXD, this is uh, our newest entry-level digital wireless system, uh, different from PGXD in actually many ways. Uh, number one is you're looking at um, uh, metal transmitters, which is, again, kind of a unique thing to, to get at this price point, but that's a, that's a great thing. Um, but most significantly, it operates in the 2.4 gigahertz band instead of 900 megahertz, so also in an unlicensed band. Um, the difference is that 2.4 gigahertz is actually a lot more crowded. There's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all kinds of stuff. So we had to do some things in the design of GLXD to make sure that it works in that environment. And it's not the only 2.4 gigahertz wireless system out there. There are there are others. But what we did to make sure that ours was going to work was actually give the receiver the ability to know when it's being interfered with and change channels to get rid of that interference. Not only that, it's actually broadcasting your audio spread across three different carriers so that if any one of those carriers gets interfered with, um, your audio still stays on the air. Your mic stays on the air. It's kind of like a triple redundancy. Now, on top of that, on top of the three frequencies that it's using, it's also keeping three backups in reserve so that if one of those frequencies do does get interfered with, it can shift to a backup frequency again to kind of 
give extra security that you're going to stay on the air, even if there's some Wi-Fi around. Again, the, the, the trade-off is that four or five compatible frequencies. GLXD is not the system to choose if you need to use lots of wireless. But if you only need a couple of channels and your uh, range requirements are relatively short, it's great. Keep in mind that because at the higher frequencies, wavelengths are shorter and there can be more loss due to absorption and uh, things like that. So if you're looking for that, you know, three, 400 feet of range out of a wireless system, probably not going to get that out of GLXD. But if you keep your receivers and transmitters really relatively close together, it will work pretty well. The, um, GLXD uses a rechargeable battery, the SB902. In fact, that's the only option. There is no AA option. Every GLXD transmitter comes with the SB902 rechargeable battery, which has all of the advantages we already talked about, including 17 hours of continuous runtime, which is the longest we get out, out of any of our systems with any battery options. So really, really long runtime. And you can charge the battery in the GLXD4 re tabletop receiver. You can charge it in the transmitter with the supplied um, uh, USB to um, AC power cord. So uh, you can even actually, uh, there's a car charger option we have. You can charge it in your car on the way to the gig. So there's all kinds of ways to charge the battery uh, and, uh, and, and make sure that you'll always be able to run. The final thing I want to point out about GLXD, which you can see kind of featured really prominently in the photo here, is the GLXD6 guitar pedal shaped receiver. GLXD is probably one of the first wireless systems with that pedal in mind that we that we designed for guitar players, right? You know, I mean, having to put the receiver on top of your amp and then run a cable from the receiver back to your pedal board and then back to the input of the amplifier, it's kind of kludgy. So why not put the receiver where it needs to go right on the pedal board? All metal construction built like the most rugged stomp box you could ever imagine can be powered from your um, from its own power supply or from some pedal board power supplies. And it's got a built-in tuner, which is a really great tuner. In fact, I know several guitar players around here that like to use it just because of the tuner. <laughs> so you get you get not only a, a great sounding wireless guitar system, but a tuner as well. The fact that it's digital, again, what we already talked about, the sound quality advantages there really does kind of matter most to guitar players. I think out of everybody that might be sensitive to companding artifacts in an analog system, most of those complaints come from guitar players. And if you are a guitar player that's been reluctant to use wireless because of the companding, you probably need to check out a GLXD system there. Okay, finally, on the rounding out the entry-level systems, I want to talk about the FP Portable Wireless System. This is a wireless system that's specifically designed for videographers uh, who are looking for a portable wireless mic solution that, where they can mount the receiver directly to their camera. So again, uh, the FP5 is actually the portable receiver that's available in this system. And again, uh, can runs off of AA batteries, but it's still a diversity receiver. And uh, it comes with uh, both cor um, sorry, eighth inch and XLR output cables so that you can connect it to a variety of sources. This is uh, allows up to uh, five compatible systems per TV channel or 12 compatible systems um, overall, which again is probably more than you would ever need for um, a typical sort of videographer or application where you might have, you know, one handheld and maybe one lavalier microphone or something like that. There is also an FP3 plug-on transmitter available in the FP series as well. Uh, we mentioned plug-ons earlier, which takes any dynamic microphone and turns it into a wireless microphone. And finally, the um, the actual FP2 handheld is available with the VP68 omnidirectional condenser mic head. For again, for a lot of electronic news gathering type applications, it's useful to have an omnidirectional mic for interviews rather than a cardioid pattern mic. And that, that option is available here on the FP series. Okay, let's take a jump up into the next tier, sort of getting into some professional systems now. We're going to look at two systems, the QLXD and the ULXD digital wireless microphone systems. Pictured here is QLXD, as you might imagine. It's a digital system. You can tell by the D in the in the model or the series name. But this system, unlike PGXD and GLXD, is not in the unlicensed bands. This operates in the UHF TV band. Because of that, um, it allows us to get lots and lots of channels on the air. So whereas in the entry level system, your choice is kind of like digital for sound quality or analog, uh, analog if you um, uh, if you need more channels on the air. 
so and but when you get up into the more the mid tier professional systems, the channel count limitations go away. Uh, now you're looking at uh, you know being still getting all the advantages of this great sound quality and being able to use lots of channels on the air. In fact, more channels than you could ever do with a comparable analog system. QLXD is tunable across 64 megahertz tuning range, which is huge, and offers up to 60 compatible more than 60 compatible frequencies across that total band. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you never have that whole range available to you. So let's narrow it down to that one TV channel again, that one six megahertz chunk of spectrum. You can use up to 17 QLXD systems at a time. That's almost more than double. Actually, I guess it is more than double you can do with any mid-tier analog wireless system and, and almost more than double you can do with some of the premium systems. So that's a that's a huge number of simultaneous transmitters in a very small amount of spectrum. The QLXD also gives you the ability to run off of either the included AA alkaline battery or upgrade to the SB900 rechargeable battery. You'll notice that the SB900 actually gives you slightly longer battery life at 10 hours, uh, but again, it has all those other options we talked about, including the battery metrics and all of that other good stuff. The QLXD transmitters are also uh, dockable for charging purposes. That means there's external charging contacts on the transmitter. So with the SBC200 dual docking charger, you can actually charge the batteries without even having to take them out of the transmitter. You just drop them in the charger when you're done and they charge up and you're all good to go. Uh, it, metal transmitter as as well, metal transmitters, metal receivers. It's a half rack style single receiver here. Again, you can mount them together uh, side by side in a single rack and all uh, hardware is included. Uh, channel scan, network channel scan, and IR synchronization. Now I'm going to mention what network channel scan is. The net, as the word network implies, there's actually an Ethernet jack on these things, and you can um, you can actually hook these receivers together up using any off-the-shelf Ethernet switch. And when you do that, it becomes it gives you the ability to use one receiver to find clear frequencies for all of your other network receivers. You just do a scan finds clear frequencies, hit enter, and away you go. So the networking is a is a really powerful feature on the QLXD, and this is the, uh, I think, most inexpensive system we've ever had that features built-in Ethernet networking. Along with Ethernet networking, that also allows you to monitor and control QLXD from our Wireless Workbench 6 software, as well as our Sure Plus Channels mobile app. If you weren't aware that we had a mobile app, we do. You can actually get it from the iTunes store, and again, it's called Sure Plus Channels, and that also allows you to monitor and control both QLXD and ULXD receivers from your uh, from your iOS device. So kind of a kind of a cool thing to be able to do there. A couple other features, auto gain ranging means that you don't have to adjust the gain on the QLXD transmitters. They are able to sort of uh, set themselves and any gain adjustments you might make on the system are done from the receiver instead of having to do it on the transmitter. And it features 256-bit encryption. So if security is an option, you can turn on the encryption feature. And uh, for any given transmitter that has encryption, only its synchronized receiver will be able to pick up the audio, just extract the audio from that particular transmitter. So it's a nice option there. When we jump to ULXD now, um, there's actually a lot of similarities to QLXD. In fact, several of these bullet points probably look almost identical, including the number of channels you can get on the air, the frequency ranges that it operates in, slightly longer battery life, um, still a networkable system, still with all metal transmitters, receivers, uh, docking, uh, charging contacts on the transmitters themselves, um, lots of similarities, but a few differences here. Um, one of the uh, obvious ones physically is that there's the, uh, the presence of dual and quad receivers. So again, there's a half rack single ULXD, but we have full rack dual and quad channel receivers. The quad in particular is a great um, space saving uh, design. Also a feature of the dual and quad receivers is built in Dante Digital Audio Networking, which we have another uh, archived webinar if you want to learn more about what Dante is. But for those of you who are familiar with Dante, network and have other Dante enabled devices, mixers, signal processors, what have you, the ULXD dual and quads can now uh, have, have the ability to, to route audio digitally as well over the Dante network. Another feature that sets ULXD apart is something that we call high density mode. High density mode allows you to 
use a ridiculous number of wireless frequencies in that same six megahertz single TV channel amount of spectrum. If 17 wasn't enough, uh, if you only had one TV channel available, you could use up to 47 microphones in a single TV channel. And that's kind of what's shown by this um, spectrum analyzer screen capture down here. It's six megahertz wide slice we're looking at here. And each one of these little peaks represents a ULXD transmitter operating in high density mode. Now, what's the trade-off, right? You couldn't possibly get all of that for free. The trade-off is reduced operating range. I again, if most wireless systems get about 300 feet operating range, line of sight, on a ULXD in high-density mode, it cuts it down to about 100 feet of range, line of sight, which is still pretty good for most applications. Um, again, there's no impact on sound quality. There's a very little impact on latency. I think it adds an additional less than a millisecond of additional latency um, to the signal. But other than that, there's really no other downside other than the reduced operating range. Part of that comes from the fact that um, the system is only operating at one milliwatt instead of 10 or 20 milliwatts when you're in the high density mode. But um, again, in a crowded RF environment, this can be, actually be a fairly um, major feature here. OK, wrapping it up with a look at our premium systems, uh, UHFR. This is uh, the 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 old man of the Sure Wireless product lines here now. I think it's been out close to 10 years now, but it is the standard in the pro touring sound business. Um, if you watch late night television, if you watch award shows, if you go to concerts, you see and hear UHFR all over the place. Again, it's been around for, more, for a while. It's not going anywhere anytime soon um, because, like I said, it is pretty much the standard for high-tier wireless at this point. It is an analog system. Again, that's what we were doing 10 years ago was all analog, but is one of the best sounding analog systems out there. It has a 60 megahertz tuning range, which was you know, unprecedented at the time and allows up to 40 compatible frequencies per band. And between the four bands that are available for UHFR, it does cover pretty much the entire UHF television spectrum. You can use about nine, uh, nine systems per open TV channel. So pretty good number for an analog system, AA batteries only. It's a networkable receiver still. So group and channel scan, you can have one receiver scan and find frequencies for all your other receivers, IR synchronization, everything is metal, wireless workbench six compatibility, of course, for control and monitoring purposes. And we've kind of expanded the line by adding in some other, uh, some other transmitter and receiver options. Again, the, the original UHF are included single and dual rack mount receivers. We not too long ago introduced the UR5, which is a portable uh, battery powered receiver, again, for ENG applications or where you need to, um, you know, get a little bit more um, uh, portability, but at a, at a higher end application, the UR5 is, is great for that. Um, and it's also compatible with the SB900 rechargeable battery. It's the only UR component that is um, and has the, uh, so you can, again, uh, Take advantage of that with the UR5. The UR3 plug-on transmitter um, is, again, uh, for taking any microphone and making it wireless. Uh, it actually has phantom power, so you can even use condenser microphones with it. Um, and it's a great um, a great plug-on solution there. We have a micro pack. Um, if you needed the smallest possible body pack for, again, for theatrical applications where there's costuming issues and things like that, uh, the UR1 is available. So it's UHFR probably has the most flexibility in terms of choosing exactly the right receiver or transmitter design for any any given application that you might that you might need it for. And then there's the Axion system, which is a whole nother topic in and of its own right, so we can't spend a lot of time on it now. But uh, if you've heard of Axion and wondered what it is, Axion is actually a it's really a wireless management system. It's a suite of components that allows you to have more control over all of your wireless devices than you've ever had before. The Axion transmitter and receivers themselves are the best sounding analog systems in our line, rivals that of the digital systems. The RF performance is probably the best out of any of our systems. And it has some really cool, unique features. The Axion system was the first world's first wireless microphone system that could actually detect when it was being interfered with and do something about it. Used in conjunction with the AXT600 Spectrum Manager, the Axiom receivers can, within less than half a second of determining that there's interference, move you seamlessly to a clear, compatible frequency with everything else that you're using. 
Uh, it happens almost imperceptibly. Uh, it also offers a feature called frequency diversity that allows you to send the same audio signal out over two radio carriers and then have two channels of a receiver receiving the same signal. So that if one gets interfered with, the, the other backup is kind of already there. You're starting to see this being used in a lot of NFL games. If you watch football on Sundays, look at the refs. You'll see them wearing AXT 100 Axiant packs. You'll see the national anthem being sung on a lot of AXT 200 handhelds. It is it is everything UHFR is and a lot more than that. And again, those types of applications. Again, the you know the football games, the uh, the award shows, you know the the major arena acts. That's that's kind of you know um, uh, it, late night talk shows. That's where you start to see the Axiant system really being used for those applications. Very unique system, very cool system. There's also an archived webinar that talks more about Axiant if you'd really like to get the full story on that system. So that was a lot of stuff. Hopefully you pulled some nuggets out of there that will help you um, uh, choose your next wireless mic system. Uh, now I'm going to turn it back over to Cheryl. All right, great. Uh, don't have any que many questions right now, so if you've got any questions, get them in now. Now is the time. Um, but before we break into those, just a few quick notes. Um, we are going to be taking a short hiatus for the holiday season, so have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah and, and uh, whatever else you may celebrate, Thanksgiving. May it be great, and we'll see you back in February. Um, you can go to shore.com slash training for updates as well as, like I said, that webinar archive is located there. So please feel free to peruse that. If you're missing your webinars over the holidays, go there and you can catch up on the on the other on the other topics that we've talked about. Um, you can also go to shore.com slash subscribe to sign up for our newsletter. And if you do that, you'll get updates about upcoming one webinars in real time. So you'll you'll be up to the date about up to date about what's coming next. Um, so with all of that business taken care of, we'll just jump to the questions. Uh, first question is about the FP3 plug-on transmitter. Does it work with condenser mics like the UR3? No, the FP3 does not have phantom power, so the FP3 will only work with dynamic microphones. If you need a condenser mic plug-on, go to the UR series. Okay, great. Um, are you still are we still supporting the SLX systems? Great question. Yes, SLX is around. It is not being discontinued. There are no plans to discontinue it, but it is uh, an older system uh, at this point. So a lot of the applications where you may use SLX, you could be uh, equally as well served by the BLX series if you choose the rack mount receiver, um, because the tuning range is actually the same. Uh, as it is on SLX, a 24 megahertz tuning range, the compatibility is about the same, but you get much longer battery life uh, and improved sound quality by going to the BLXR or the new QLXD system, which is a little more money than SLX, but not, well, I, I shouldn't say <laughs> a little bit of money to some people is a lot to other people, but um, for not too much more money, you can jump to the QLXD, which again, the digital sound quality way, way, way more channels in terms of compatibility, but still in a half rack receiver, you get metal transmitters as well. So, um, you know, SLX does still exist for a certain kind of niche that it fills, particularly if you're looking for wireless gooseneck or wireless boundary microphones, those are available and the, with the MX690 and MX890 transmitters that work with the SLX series. So certainly still has its place, but I think that if you took a good long look at most of your applications, you might either be able to save a few dollars by going with the BLX4R or spend a few more and get all the advantages of QLXD. Great. How long does it take to charge an SB900 battery? Ooh, great question. Uh, our rechargeable batteries will get to full charge in about three hours and 50% charge in an hour. Uh, so, in, in fact, even if you, uh, this kind of came up a lot with the GLXD, it's like, what if I get to the gig and my battery's dead? You can actually get about an hour of runtime after only 15 minutes of charge time. So for shorter gigs, you can even get a little something going, but. Or enough to get you through that first set and then charge it really quick on the set break. <laughs> and do it again. Right. Exactly. But, but you should be charging it in the car ride on the way there with your USB charger. That's right. <laughs> But three hours, full charge in three hours. All right, great. I think that just about wraps up all of the questions. If you think of any uh, that pop into your head, oh, wait, uh, one quick question here. This is a good one, actually, about antenna combiners. Is there a specific series of antenna combiners for digital systems? Ah, great question. This one came up in the morning section, too. Um, first of all, just as a 
note of clarification, what we're actually talking about is antenna distribution systems because it's taking the antenna signal and actually splitting it or distributing it to multiple receivers versus a combiner, which combines antenna signals together, but uh, <laughs> not to bog down in a semantic <laughs> debate. But at any rate, yes, you're referring to like the UA844 and UA845 antenna distributions, and those work equally as well with QLXD and ULXD digital wireless system. In fact, on the antenna end of, th end of things with those systems, you would not handle them any different differently than you do uh, on the analog system. Same antennas, same cables, same amplifiers, same distro, same best practices, all of that applies equally as well to the digital system. So thanks for that question. Great. All right. I think that just about wraps up. If you have any questions that come up, you can send those to support at shore.com. And we usually get back to you with answers within about one business day. So please feel free to send any questions you have there. And in the meantime, have a very happy holidays and we will see you in February.